Do you want to pick the GoPro? And I've got it recording. Yes. Oh. Holy! Flip! This is a YouTube video. Can't swear. Oh my God! One of the main things that I think drew me to adventures, wildlife and nature is all of the huge and exciting animals you can find. You know, Nile crocodiles, great white sharks, big bears, these things I've always been fascinated in. But the country I'm from, the United Kingdom, is one of the most wildlife depleted places on the planet. Where I'm currently residing now, which is central Spain, is probably not that far behind. But what if I told you that I was wrong and that there is a group of animals which are incredibly fascinating living right underneath my feet. Although not the biggest or the scariest, they're the perfect mix of beautiful and deadly that I'm looking for which I love to film and photograph. And on today's adventure we are teaming up with a herpetologist and snake expert to help me find Europe's biggest snake. Mm -hmm. So you are looking for a small portion of the snake or the whole snake stretched out, stretched out. Yeah. And normally, uh, Malpollen, there's one. You see them? No, I, I can't see it. It's a female. Oh, I think I see it. You see it? I think so. Okay, let's try to grab it. It's a big thing with a capital T. Whoa! <laughs> I did not see it. I was looking okay, at something a, else. It's a small male. And what? Snakes, if you and if you handle them uh, like uh, well, yeah, and not with uh, rough movements and so, they usually don't bite. Ladies and gents, meet Max. He is a professional herpetologist, meaning the study of reptiles and amphibians, and he has agreed to help me find my snake. So. Uh... Yeah, it's a small male. Yeah. You, when they are so small, they, it's a, a swallowed male. Uh -huh. You can tell them apart easily uh, because of the supra, supra labial uh, scales. Yeah. Females, if you can see them, uh, it has like some white spots. Uh -huh. And females have a, a black circle around that white spot. Mm. And males don't have. After enjoying this guy's company for a little while, we released him. Unharmed and back exactly where we found him. Max has been studying and photographing these creatures for over 15 years. He has an extensive knowledge of all of the herpetological animals which call the Iberian Peninsula their home. With his knowledge, he is pointing me in the direction of animals which I wouldn't normally notice whilst on a walk. It's a lot of fun to film these creatures that I wouldn't normally film. <laughs> and our location is Castellón a perfect mix between beautiful countryside and sprawling urban landscapes. Perfect for finding reptiles and amphibians. Although it may not look like it, this empty swimming pool is an animal trap. As you can see, there's a lot of foliage and grass in this pool, meaning that animals could easily escape. Nothing like in here, so animals can get out, but now there are so much plants and so much things mm. that no problem so this is not really a, a trap but this would be a prime animal trap if there was not as much plant life that's it our target species is cold-blooded meaning they rely on the environment for their body temperature the sun here in spain is incredibly strong so they take to hiding under rocks to shield themselves from it however there's a lot of rocks and not all of them have animals under them so you got to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying until you get lucky. And this requires a little bit of patience. Sue's home. One day, we'll get these things. <laughs> One day we'll have a go. 
I believe in us. I think we've got this. <laughs> when flipping rocks, it's incredibly important to put them back exactly how you found them in order to protect and conserve the micro ecosystems which develop underneath them. What have we got here? Here we have got a, a smooth snake, Coronella girondica. It's the southern smooth snake, I think. And it's a juvenile, a, a juvenile subadult. They, they, this species doesn't get too big, mm. like maybe 60, 70 centimeters at most. Yeah. It's a, re a really secretive species, mm -hmm. always. They are mainly nocturnal. Yeah. They eat uh, lizards, geckos. They are mm. in Spanish you call it sauriophagas. It's like they really like to to eat cold-blooded animals like yeah. lizards or or even vipers. They can't Ooh. eat. Oh. But it doesn't like it because it's like a small snake, but yeah. they can eat vipers. It's, it's yeah. really interesting. And yes, they get about 60, 70 centimeters. They are mainly nocturnal and. They are harmless. They yeah. have no no venom, no, uh, no venom. So they are harmless, and yeah, that's it. This, the smooth snake. I never thought I'd say that the snake was cute, but this smooth snake is adorable. But I want someone who's a bit bigger. I want one of his friends to show up, and luckily for me, there's one just around the corner. Ah, we make it work. Do you want to pick the GoPro? And I've got it recording. Yes? Oh. Holy! Flip! This is a YouTube video, can't swear. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> a big mill. How you can, can you tell? Mills uh, are normally green, greenish and more like uniform pattern. Yeah. And they also have normally this... this uh, this black like thing here, black spot, black big spot here. Yeah. And the the males are the ones that get so big. The females get around 1.2 meters, 1.3 at most, and males can get up to two meters, two and a half meters. Amazing. That is an incredible sound. We can go the, down there and of course and yeah. film it. Yes, that'd be perfect. Okay, so yeah. Let's. Let's continue. Let's continue. You're going to carry the snake with you? Yes. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> Approximately almost five foot long, thick, full of muscle, this was the beautiful monster snake that I was hoping to find. So this is your favourite snake species, eh? This one and the leather snake. I yeah. love leather snakes. But this one, you can see how intelligent they are. They yeah. are like very visual snakes. They they always are looking at you. This one is trying to bite me right now, but it's really cold, so it's not going to achieve it. How many of these guys do you reckon you've caught in your lifetime? In my lifetime? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a difficult question. I think maybe, I don't know, 100, 100 150, I don't know, 200. Yeah. Uh, as big as this one, not so many. Yeah. Um, maybe 30 or so. But Montpellier snakes in general, like a lot of them. It's the most common snake around here, so. Yeah. Man, such a beautiful animal. Absolutely stunning. I want a formal introduction to this animal. All right, man. What have we got here? So here we have a, a Montpellier snake, Malpolon monspesulanus in Latin, and yeah, it's a big male. You can see it is a big male because it has like really uniform pattern. Yeah. A big black dot like uh, there on the neck, like uh -huh. there. Yeah. And it has like a green greenish neck head, and yeah, the males are the only ones that get so big. Females normally tend to to stay a little bit yeah smaller, like. 1.2 meters, 1.3. Beautiful man. And they, yeah, they don't, they don't get this thick because this is a thick snake, well fed snake. And and yes, that's it. This is the most common snake around here with leather snake. Mm. So this is the snake I've always seen during yeah. my whole lifetime. So yeah, it's it's a great snake. That's amazing, and it's yeah. the 
the queen of the snakes here in in this area mm. and in yeah. in whole the in whole Spain. Yeah. Because it it's all snake, it eats vipers. Mm -hmm. It can yeah now with the climate change, these ones are are going like upper north because of the warmer weather. Yeah. And they are moving like vipers more north because they eat them. For these ones, it's better. Like they have yeah. more 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 areas where they can thrive because mm -hmm. the warmer weather. But for vipers, for example, that yeah. usually live in colder weathers and they have no no predators like Malpolomus pesulanus, yeah. uh, it's an issue because yeah, there are snakes like this one or the horseshoe whip snake, Amorodes hippocrepis, that are going upper north because of the warmer temperatures. Yeah, so it's a problem for them, but it's good for it's good for, for these ones. Yeah. Yeah. So in this um, in this area, this, we're kind of in like farmland right now. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was amazing. <laughs> well, let me. You, um, this guy. What's his main source of prey around here? Like around here, I think I think the the main sources of prey are rodents, uh -huh. uh, rabbits, small rabbits, and a big guy like this one, a 1.5, 1.6, one, six meter one, can take down. A decently big rabbit, not an, uh, a full-grown one, but like yeah. a medium-sized rabbit, he can take it, no problem. Yeah, decent size. And sized. he also preys on, on other snakes, like uh, very frequently, like uh, ladder snakes, also mm. other Montpellier snakes, when they are out of the breeding season. Yeah. And yeah, they are just amazing. They are the ultimate hunter, like yeah. around here. That's amazing. Yeah, this is this is the biggest uh, snake in Europe. Like the mm. species that gets longer. So yeah, it's it's difficult to find big spe uh, specimens. Yeah. Normally, the biggest ones I find uh, they are like 1.7, 1.8 meter. Yeah. But they can grow up to two meters or 2.5. Uh -huh. But those are rare, rare sightings, yeah. and they are rare to find. Amazing, man. I think we should move on, eh? Yes, let's go. Let's have another day. Perfect. <sighs> Thanks, man. After I learned as much about the snake as we could, we released it promptly back exactly where we found it. Awesome. On this adventure I learned that there is a fascinating ecosystem which is hidden in plain sight and it's populated by some of the most incredible little creatures you could probably find out there. But for me, this adventure was all about the star. Snakes are criminally underrated animals. They have that perfect mix of beauty and slickness and potential deadliness which makes other wildlife so incredible to look at and be around. Except the difference is that you can find a snake on almost every country on the planet. Next time you go for a hike, keep a close eye on your surroundings, because there is a high probability that you are sharing space with one of our planet's more underrated wonders. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, subscribe to that subscribe button, and ring the bell to stay notified when I next upload a video. And if you enjoyed this, maybe consider going outside yourself on your own adventure and then watch more of my videos, which will be somewhere on the screen here. Thanks again for checking me out. I'll see you next time.